Hey noble ones, welcome back to my channel. This is the method on speaking and what have we got today? Okay, so today we are on the channel Wired again and we're looking at Paleontologist Answers Dinosaur Quest. <laughs> Oh, Metatron, why are you laughing? No, I'm telling you why I'm laughing. I'm laughing because I'm going to do what I usually do. I put the name of the channel, Wired. Then I put the title, Paleontologist, Egyptologist, Medieval Expert, said this about that. And then in the comments, as always, there's going to be those people that are like, yeah, Metatron, the weirdest of claimed samurai expert calling a genuine expert weird is mental. Dungeons and Dragons can't make all the love watching you get the points. Stuart! Stuart. Stuart and everyone else. This is how you spell Wired, which is the name of the channel I'm responding to. This is how you spell Weird. <sighs> ah, gods of Olympus have mercy on us. I'm paleontologist Hansus. Today I will be answering your questions from Twitter. This is Dino Support. Yeah, let's go! Ed Tokaji Sensuna asks, what's the scariest dinosaur? Ridley Scott. I think the scariest looking dinosaur would have been Spinosaurus, simply because it had this huge sail on wow. its back. But I think here in the United States, the T-Rex is definitely the people's favorite. Here's yep. part of a T-Rex. My favorite too. T-Rex tooth, the largest tooth, including... Holy moly, look at that. Look, I wonder if it's a replica or if he actually brought... An, well, if it was an original, I think he would be wearing gloves, right? I mean, I don't know, I haven't got a clue what paleontologists do these days. But yeah, no, that's insane. It's like, how big is it? Like in comparison to his head, it's like he, one of his teeth is like this big. And then this dinosaur tooth is as big as from his chin all the way up to his brow. <laughs> that's insane. The root gets up to about seven or eight inches in length. These cutting edges are serrated like a steak knife. T-Rex ate the whole prey. We have fossil dropping. All right, so bones included. ...of T-Rex, and they show us that it ate the meat and the bones. Man, imagine the digestive capability of that beast. ...punched up the bones, much like some big crocodiles do today. Much and like my cousin. That Ricky Dells us. Scientifically and historically speaking, yeah. how do we know what dinosaurs sounded like? Surely mm. the sounds the movies have taught us are just guesses. You know? Yeah, the idea, I think, and again, once again, I'm not a dinosaur expert, but I think I do know this one. There is no reason as to why we would expect dinosaurs to have the literal roaring of a lion, but like 10 times louder. I honestly don't think that that would be like, it does sound great though. I have to give them that movie makers and whatnot, it does sound great. No. Well, indeed, they are just guesses. Yeah. In fact, it's quite likely that dinosaurs were much quieter than people give them credit for. Birds sing, but most reptiles don't make much in the way of... I was going to say, like, maybe have an idea of what, what do crocodiles do? Because I think that could be a way to try, maybe, yes. Sounds except for hisses and grunts. So right. you think that dinosaurs would have done things like that, but certainly not this lion roar that yeah. Hollywood wants us to believe. EV for evil Hollywood changing the real facts of what dinosaurs sounded like. Give them enough time, dinosaurs will start sounding cockney. I mean, why wouldn't they? The Romans sound cockney. All villains sound English. That includes AI oftentimes in movies, but only if it's trying to take over the world. Or N2K4 us. When I die and go to heaven, first thing I'm asking God is, what did Jurassic Park get wrong? Mm -hmm. Jurassic Park was made as an entertaining movie. Absolutely, yeah. Not as a science documentary. That's what I try to remind myself every time I watch a movie about ancient Rome or the medieval period. I try to tell myself that. I've been like, come on, Metro, just shut up. It's just a movie made for entertainment. It's not supposed to be a documentary, so stop it. But it fails every time. Miserably. And how can it not? They put a medieval trebuchet in a battle in Gladiator 2 that in theory was supposed to have happened in 105 BC. Star of the movies are the raptors. Yeah. Here is an actual skull of an adult velociraptor. The film. Would you be actually more scared of having to deal, survive like a raptor attack over a T Rex? I don't know. Because if I'm inside a building that is structurally strong, then, you know, maybe I can hide from the thing. But if it's raptors, I feel like they could enter the building. Makers decided that it looked too puny and they needed something bigger. Strangely enough, shortly after this was filmed, People found a really gigantic raptor out in really Utah, and since then in Utah it was an LDS raptor. 
other giant raptors have been found in South America and in Asia. So there were giant raptors around, but they were in fact much bigger than the ones in the movie. Much bigger than the ones. So the ones in the movie were already bigger than the previous fossils that he was showing. But then he says much bigger. I wonder how big. I wish he showed us. Man, could you imagine that? Like, of course, I'm not thinking a raptor as big as a T-Rex, but even if it's like a third of a T-Rex. <laughs> the movie claims that T-Rex could mm. only detect prey by motion. In fact, when we study the brain case of a T-Rex, we find that it had very large olfactory bulbs, which are huh. the part of the brain that picks up information. So it could smell you. Information from the nose. It had very large opening for the optic nerve, which is the nerve. So he could see you really well. Okay, so why did they do that? Honestly, it would be a lot more terrifying if you think about it. The idea of this is a optimized killing machine, hunting machine of a monster. And so he can smell you. He can see you really well. He can hear you really well. Maybe he's going to tell us now in a minute. I think that would have been so much better for the sort of like you're not getting away from this guy <laughs> there's no way he will detect you i think that's a lot more scary transmits information from the eye to the brain yeah and it had a very complicated inner ear that allowed it to hear at least the wide range of low frequency sounds so it would have smelled the actors in front of its snout and it would have been a very short movie indeed <laughs> Very short. Well, I mean, yeah. Yeah, I'll give him that. Hey, Noble Ones, editing Metatron here. Just wanted to take a moment to let you know that in the next three to four days, I will be streaming like a maniac on my Twitch account, Metatron Gemini. Now, I already stream a lot. I stream almost every day, two hours, three hours. We've been playing retro game. We'll be playing Civilization. But for the next three to four days, I will be playing long sessions of medieval and ancient Roman themed games. And I will be as pedantic as it gets with historical analysis. Course. So we're going to play modded Skyrim, playing as an Imperial with ancient Roman period accurate gear. Yeah, that's a mod. I'll play Kingdom Come Deliverance 1 as we are waiting for the next one. We'll play Civilization 6, Hellish Quartz, Manor Lord. I got a list. Heroes of Might and Magic 3 and 5, Oblivion Morrowind, Defender of the Crown for Amiga 500. We'll play Valheim, Baldur's Gate, Dragon's Dogma games, Dungeons and Dragons games, Original Diablo. And not only is it going to be really fun, but it's the end of the year bonus round. So if at any point you were thinking, hey, I'd like to get this subscription to support Metatron as a streamer, well, you can get a bonus gift sub and save up to 30% on new subs until the 2nd of January. Click the link in the description, come check it out. It's going to be fun. And to all those of you who have already used your Prime membership, a lot of people, I've been getting like 30 subs a day, almost a lot of people are using the Prime subscription and I'm so humbled and grateful for that. I, it's like there are so many good streamers and people for some reasons choose to use their Prime membership on me. I don't even know what I'm doing, but it's fun. It is fun. So come check it out. Link in the description. Back to the video. Emo here, a Western. How did the asteroid kill every dinosaur? Like, doesn't an asteroid hit like one general area? Yeah, I think the theory behind that is the environmental repercussions of such an event. He's going to tell us about floods. He's going to tell us, I think, about climate. He's going to tell us about the effects on the flora, which then connected to the fauna. Rather than like the entire world, the asteroid theory is a very flat Earth theory. No, I think it's not as bad as flat Earth. It's a theory in this, but although then again, a theory already is a pretty good status. It's better than an hypothesis, for instance, within the scientific field and academic approach, just because when people are like, it's just a theory, well, theory is pretty high up, but regardless, but it's definitely much better than what we have as evidence of a flat Earth. There's no flat Earth. The Earth is a sphere. Yeah. What happened was when the asteroid happens to impact, it released the equivalent of a hundred million megatons of energy. And this basically melted this huge asteroid, which was six miles in diameter. Right. And this sent up a gigantic cloud of glowing material up into the atmosphere. This would spread around the world. We see this even today when a volcano erupts, volcanic mm -hmm. dust sweeps all around the world. Imagine a world where it suddenly is... He, he, he always looks up the camera. Maybe he does have a dinosaur in front of him. ...meaning drops of molten glass. That's what was happening. And so basically every larger animal at that point died. And that's why the dinosaurs were wiped out probably within a matter of hours, at most a hours. matter of days. Oh, and that's insane. That is a fascinating theory. I'll have to look into it more. Uh, of course, when we go that far back, it's very difficult to be precise with information. It's already difficult with ancient Rome. It's already difficult with ancient Egypt. Egypt was already ancient in ancient Egypt.
<laughs> Cleopatra is closer to our phones than she was to the building of the pyramids. So yeah, ancient Egypt was already ancient in ancient Egypt. I love that. At Lauren Berger asks, how do they know what color dinosaurs were? For many years, we really had no idea what color dinosaurs had. In fact, people sort of assumed that like many of the modern lizards, snakes, mm. crocodiles, turtles, it would have been sort of greenish brown. And that's what you see in all of the old dinosaur books. Yeah. However, in recent years, Thanks to some remarkable discoveries in China, we actually found out what some dinosaurs looked like. Oh, this is fascinating. It was a real revelation. We found that some of the little feathered dinosaurs actually had color patterns as vivid as those in modern birds. There is a dinosaur called Cao Long, and it had beautifully iridescent feathers. So it would wow. have looked like a big starling with nasty claws. So the dinosaur world was far more colorful than we were previously thinking. You know, that's so crazy because it's the same thing that keeps happening over and over again. We always imagine the past bleak, dark and void of color. I wonder why. And then the reality, it happens in all sorts of subjects, including the ones that I usually cover. Think about it. Ancient Rome, we always see the white columns. We see the white marbles we see the white statues and the white temples and in reality everything was in color with bright reds and bright blue everything was painted with greens and oranges and that's the same for ancient greek and that's the same for the mycenaeans the minoans everything was full of color in architectural polychromy in statuary in art in clothes same for the uh, medieval period if you look at the real iconography is full of greens and reds and blues and it's gorgeous and then instead in the movies everything is covered in gray brown black and dark and then that's not what things looked like and the Norse as well loved wearing their blues and wearing their greens and then instead the Norse are always represented in gray black and brown with fur it's so weird and so it seems like the, I mean I'm listening to the expert I have no expertise in this subject but it appears that even the freaking dinosaur were more colorful than we imagine you know it's <laughs> maybe we need to learn a lesson when it comes to this T6 Lee us. So why were dinosaurs so big back then, but now animals are small? Scientists go. go. A lot of dinosaurs were big, but there were also small dinosaurs. In fact, there's one dinosaur that's barely over two feet long. Do you live in an environment where it's advantageous to be big for your particular mode of life? And there's some places on Earth where the rules are reversed. Often on islands, generally large animals become dwarfs. About mm. 15 million years ago, a gigantic hedgehog lived on an island in what's now Italy. In other parts of the Mediterranean, there were tiny elephants running around. Yeah, he was blue. and His name was Sonic. It would have actually sort of been nice little pets if we had been around at that time. Lovely. God studies us. How many species of dinosaurs are there? I want to know all of them. Right now, there are about... Then you should become a paleontologist then. <laughs> about 1,100 described species of really? dinosaurs other than birds. Even very conservative estimates put the number much higher, anywhere between 2,000 and 5,000. And there may have been even more. One important thing to keep in mind is we are much closer in time to a T-Rex than the T-Rex was to a Stegosaurus. I love these. You know, it's similar to what I just did with Cleopatra, that she's closer to us than she was to the ancient, to the construction of the pyramids. As you say, I love when things are put into perspective. This is probably my favorite part of this presentation up to now. Because when we think of the dinosaurs without, and I, you know, I deep approach or a, an academic approach we just think all the dinosaurs living together but the reality is that of course the, the existence of the dinosaurs stretched over such a long time then then things like this will happen and it's similar in the stone age too or how long the stone age was when you think of paleolithic mesolithic and neolithic with the birth of agriculture and then instead we think of copper age bronze age iron age and yet the time difference between a human being living in the paleolithic and a human being living already in the mesolithic without even having to go to the neolithic is mind-blowing we now have classified this myriad of species by looking at various parts of their skeleton he must be german skeleton the most obvious part of the skeleton is the hip region. When you look at the T-Rex mm. over my shoulder here, you can see- I told you there was a dinosaur. When he says that, he doesn't mean the one in the back. He means the living one in front of him. A hip girdle that has three bones with the front bone, the pubic pointing downwards. 
was in the so-called bird tip dinosaurs, which is unfortunately a misnomer since they had nothing to do with birds, you get a hip region that has the pubic bone pointing backwards. Huh. There are many more subtle anatomical differences. Man, this is fascinating stuff. Uh, let me see the other sections, because as always, I never react to the entirety of the videos as a way to encourage my viewers to go and check it out. And of course, you will find a link both in the description as a pinned comment to the original video to finish watching it. But let me show you what sections we have. Why did T-Rex have little arms? Yeah, we should check this one out. Uh, when were pterodactyls not dinosaurs not sure what that means why did the early mammals and birds not become extinct uh, who would win in a fight that's pretty cool what was the climate how are fossils a thing what dinosaurs feathers smartest dinosaur when did humans discover dinosaurs that's another very good one okay let's check out the t-rex t arms why did t-rexes have little ass arms that does not sit right with me for a dinosaur t-rex had really small but very powerful arms and you can see this here on our pride and joy. Nobody really knows why T-Rex has tiny arms. It has been calculated that the arms were still strong enough to lift up to 600 pounds of weight. Holy moly, never mind how much how much do you branch, bro. Only relatives of T-Rex still have longer arms. Other predatory dinosaurs actually get increasingly longer arms, which- Okay, interesting. So the last thing I wanted to see is the one about, but we won't watch the whole thing. We'll watch a little bit because it's interesting. When did the first humans discover that there were dinosaurs? I really want to know how we first figured out giant, giant, giant dinosaurs roamed the earth. The first record that we know of- it One giant would have been enough. Definitive dinosaur is from the 17th century in England when Robert Plott described a part of a thigh bone. He didn't know what to make of it. He compared it to giants of legend. President Thomas Jefferson couldn't conceive of the fact that animals had gone extinct, even though he found fossils of extinct animals on his estate in Virginia. He thought that these animals still existed somewhere alive out west. And that was one of the reasons. Interesting. It's a miscalculation, a misinterpretation. All right, well, thank you very much. What's his name? Dr. Hans uh, for all the discussion on uh, dinosaur. This was very, very interesting. And of course, if you noble ones learned something, make sure to uh, give them a like. I just gave him a like now out of camera. Finish watching it. There are quite a lot of other sections of this video that appear to be really interesting before today. I'm just going to call it a day. Thank you very much for watching. And remember, the Metatron has spread his wings. See you tomorrow. If you're enjoying this video so far, please take a moment to check out my Patreon page. With as little as a $5 support, you can help us ensure that we can continue to produce high quality and high researched content. And at the same time, you get access to polls, extra videos, unlisted streams, and much more. Thank you so much.